Good day folks, it's DIY Guy 123 here. I'm going to talk to you today about how to resolve one potential issue with a carburetor that leaks fuel right in the ground. So this is an old snowblower, it's probably 30 years old. It's got a Tecumseh 10 horsepower motor on it. And what was happening was um, the this is the bottom of the float bowl and underneath it is this gasket that I just dropped on there. And this is the main jet right here and it looks like this but upside down. And what was happening was I was having fuel leak out between this brass main jet and this threaded screw right here which adjusts your basically the size of your main jet. So um, I knew it or well I suspected it was not this little gasket, this little rubber gasket here. But instead, I figured there must be something between these two metal parts to keep them from leaking. And by the way, you don't need to take the carburetor off of the engine um, to do this job. I bought uh, Tecumseh Part 632547. Cost two bucks. Probably should have cost about 12 cents, but anyway, two bucks is fine for a brand new part. And it's an O-ring. Now, uh, I didn't think that the original part was an O-ring because it definitely didn't look round. It looked flat. And I'll take it out and show you what this is. I thought it was a flat rubber washer, but I have come to learn, and I'm being careful taking that off because I don't want to, there's a sp spring and the little black uh, brass washer and then this rubber doodad. So there it is right there, and it definitely does not look like an O-ring. It's flattened way out, but apparently that's, that's what happens to them. And when you're opening packaging like this, this O-ring is pretty small, so the chance is low, but if you had a big O-ring, you'd want to be careful that you don't tear the O-ring. Now, it's probably a good idea to put even a little bit of grease on this. The O-ring is going to pop up off of these threads onto this solid part of the of the uh, main jet. So if you look, there's a little bit of corrosion there. I'm going to clean that off. And what that will do is, as I'm adjusting this, uh, when it's in the engine, it won't stress that O-ring as much. So if I keep this smooth, it'll be easier on the O-ring. Okay, here we are. That's all been cleaned up. I'm going to... It's cleaned up, shiny metal. I'm going to pile a little bit of grease there. Only 80 times as much grease as I need this time. Spring goes on first. That grease will help uh, extend the life of this spring too. A little bit of anti-corrosion benefit there. And then the brass washer goes on next. And then the O-ring goes on to hold all of this together. We'll manage. Now I'm going to take it and thread it in here. I've blown all this out with compressed air. There. Now with that greased and cleaned, I'll be able to adjust this by hand instead of getting a screwdriver. Uh, okay, so I don't remember what the right setting is. Uh, it would have been smart to check that before I took it out, but this carb was apart before anyway, so I wouldn't really trust it. So I've got it screwed in all the way, and I'm going to unscrew it half, one, and a half turns. And I'll try it there and adjust it while the engine's running under load. Um, so often it's easiest to have somebody, you know, warm the machine up, get fresh fuel in it, warm it up, top the oil up, and then have it running where someone else is driving it through a snowbank. Not a snowbank, but, you know, six inches of snow or whatnot. And you can reach under and adjust this screw to fine tune it. So with that new O-ring in place, there should be no more fuel leakage between here and here. And if I still have fuel leakage, I'm going to suspect this rubber gasket. Give a little bit of grease on there, because why not? And then this goes on here. And then you just thread it back up into the bottom of your carb bowl. Now this is a, what size? 7 16th deep socket. And uh, the only thing I want to mention is when you take this bowl off, you'll notice there's a dented part and a non-dented part. This is the part that covers over the float pin, the hinge pin, and this is the part that actually the, the float floats up and down in this region, but that's the hinge side. So make sure you orient this properly, otherwise you could impede the operation of your float bowl. And the last thing I'll tell you is with this off, you're going to see debris and dirt in there. Clean that out. If it's really bad, you probably want to clean the whole carburetor. Um, but what I did is I just blasted a bit of uh, compressed air up into the tube that uh, takes this. And if there's any debris there, you know, it may blow through or may just 
blow out or who knows, but um, it wasn't running badly before to begin with. So um, finally, if, when you take the float down, really try to avoid getting the needle to drop, like having the needle drop out in your lap uh, or on the floor, that's no good. And, um, but other than that, that's the, uh, that's the way we put these back together. Okay, here we are right back in place. We got the bowl oriented correctly. Now, this is a brass piece here. You're not gonna put a four foot strong bar in this ratchet. You really want it snug and that's it. So you notice I'm not gripping the wrench down here. I'm just doing this and that's probably twice as much torque as I recommend and I think we're good to go there. So I will turn it back on its feet, make sure there's no further drips and next time I'm running, I'll adjust that for optimum running condition. Good luck with your do-it-yourself projects. If you like my videos, please subscribe.